again for sitting down with us. Sure, happy to. And uh, I think we'll just we'll jump right in. Is, in your opinion, is the discussion that's going on right now really about arming staff, and how did that discussion come up to the school board? Well, it seems to be, yeah, mostly about arming staff. The discussion, uh, well, we really haven't had a discussion at the school okay. board level yet. Um, the issue is out there. It came to us, uh, the chairman, Steve Youngdahl, presented to us without any prior um, co consultation or really awareness that it was coming onto the agenda. It was, there was an item on the agenda listed as an uh, update on school security issues. And then that's the meeting in which he brought all of this, some of this information that he gathered and made this, had this proposal in front of us. Okay. And um, since we hadn't had a chance, I mean, we asked some questions, but there wasn't much discussion that first mm -hmm. meeting. And then the public comment period was scheduled for uh, week before last, and okay. that's been the two occasions, and then a lot of community discussion obviously has followed. Right. Okay, so in our interview with Mr. Youngdahl, um, he said that this issue actually came up at the January 8th board meeting, and he read us the minutes, which stated that there was a report on school safety, and Trustee Pfeiffer asked Superintendent Woodward to research and include a list of options to consider, such as armed guards at schools or trained staff members carrying guns, not that this was the way to go necessarily, but that the district owes it to the community to talk about it. So, do you, is that how you remember that meeting? And is that, how did we get from there to where we are now? Well, uh, yeah, I did look back on those minutes because uh, um, the chairman has made reference to those and I do remember that meeting and there was some just, uh, obviously it wasn't a casual topic, but the discussion was fairly casual about that. There was no, clarity about where we were going to go, but yes, at some point we wanted to come back to the issue that we need some armed presence in the, um, in the meeting, and from that time until the September meeting when he presented it to us, there had been no discussion of that, okay. that, that we were made aware of. There may have been some reference that, that he and Sean may have talked to some law enforcement mm -hmm. people, but uh, certainly, as I read those minutes, that's not what uh, the request was. It wasn't to come back with one proposal, it was to look at the array of alternatives, and, okay. and, which is what I think we should be doing. Okay. And is that a pretty typical board process? So, for example, the superintendent presents, the superintendent and business manager present a budget every so often, and that issue is obviously vetted very closely, and right. so is that, are we following that process with this armed safety, or do you feel that we I would deviated? say that we're totally out of process of any board, and I serve on, I have served on lots of different boards mm -hmm. for 20 years. So. I've never seen this before, actually. Okay. Uh, and it, w it w certainly wouldn't be normal for the school board. I've been on 10 years. Uh, it's the agenda is um, usually clearer about what's coming and um, something to come totally out of the blue without any prior board knowledge or consultation about it or a heads up from the board chair or from the superintendent. Uh, this is a very unusual and not uh, the ordinary board process. Okay. Um, so just going back to really that issue of safety, do you feel that the schools in the Lake Pondre School District are safe? Well, um, I think there's always things we could be thinking about and looking at, and I think the one thing that has been done, of course this all generated out of the, the Newtown, the terrible right. shooting of all those children, and everybody immediately thinks about, what about my schools and how safe are they? And so we went through the, uh, with the facilities manager, there was lots of upgrades and that report is on the district website about all the things that have been done uh, the first half of this year to, to address that in terms of the, of the infrastructure of the school districts. And so the next piece of that was to come back and have this discussion about, so what are, what are our threat, you know, to, to my mind what we should be doing is what are, make a threat assessment, what, uh -huh. what are our concerns now, do we have ongoing concerns to the extent that we want to have armed presence? And, if it's an armed presence, then what would that be? Would that be SROs? Would, you know, just what would it be? Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of us ever thought at the time that we, we would wind up, um, any of us other than, than the chairman, obviously, mm -hmm. that we'd wind up in a discussion about arming staff. Okay. Um, do you think that Sandpoint in Bonner County with our rural schools or even just the mentality of our citizens, do you think that has an impact on, on this issue? Well, I think it does because we have, um, we do have such a, a diversity in the types of schools and the location. I think it's a, it's one kind of issue to examine what the Sandpoint schools, the high school, the middle school, obviously here on the same campus, and the in-town uh, schools would be very quick response time, and so that's one issue. 
when we look at Clark Fork and Hope and maybe Northside, we might need to take a different look at that and assess that differently. And uh, Sagal's pretty close to Sandpoint. Uh, but so I think each one deserves its own separate assessment. It's not sort of a one solution fits all. Oh, okay. Okay. So do you think that arming staff would be a viable option? I do not. I think arming staff is, is a really bad idea. Okay. And I think a lot of the community agrees with me. Um, so speaking of community, the public comment on arming staff showed that about half supported it, half were against it. Did that change your perspective at all? Were you surprised by what you saw? No, no, it was pretty much what I had suspected. I know that there was uh, an effort to, to rally people probably on both sides, and so that's kind of what I suspected. Subsequent to that time, which was almost two weeks ago now, we have gotten, um, I haven't counted them up, there's somewhere over a dozen, maybe probably less than 20, more than a dozen emails that have come in to uh, the superintendent and, and to Chairman Youngdahl and mm -hmm. the rest of the board members. and. Of those, I think there may be two or three that are um, for this proposal, and all of the rest are very strongly opposed to it. Okay. And have you spoken with staff members, so the ones who would be potentially armed, and what have you heard from them on this area? Well, I haven't reached out to speak to them specifically, mm -hmm. but everything, I mean, just coming to the school today, and I was in here earlier this week, um, I do hear from them. They come up to mm -hmm. me, and uh, basically, you know, uh, not in great numbers, but they just haven't right. seen me here. They uh, appreciate the, the statement that I uh, had put in the newspaper. Um, and I have gotten some emails from that are sent just to me, um, thanking me for, for my position mm -hmm. and, and speaking out on this. So um, we will hear from Brian Smith, the head of the uh, Teachers Association, at our next meeting right. next week. And he's polled the staff, and um, I think it's probably pretty overwhelmingly opposed. Okay. Do you feel that this issue has changed our district? An example of this would be a student spoke at the board meeting and said, simply talking about the issue makes her feel less safe. I thought that was a very interesting um, statement, and it kind of, uh, it, it kind of disturbed, I mean, it really made me feel unhappy mm -hmm. about this. Uh, I think this, and, and really my, I have two major goals in this, and one of them is to push back on the idea of arming staff. I just think that's fundamentally a bad idea. There are so many other better alternatives if we think we need that kind of presence in and around the schools. And the other issue that I am so uh, feel so strongly about is uh, the reputation and of, our, of the school district. A, a lot of us have worked really hard for the last decade plus to turn that around, and we've done it by best practices, hiring great leaders, and have got to a place where we really have a lot to brag about. Mm -hmm. But so this comes along, and suddenly this school district is in the news for this right. idea, which I think kind of fits into an old stereotype about this region, and I find that just really disappointing. Okay. So if you were to kind of think about this process and put it on a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being the absolute beginning, 10 being taking a vote to arm staff or not, where do you feel that we stand in this process right now? I think we're very early in the process, and I think that's going to be my effort is to um, say let's kind of go back a ways. We sort of seem like we're at an end point, but none of us had any input to all the other, you know, middle first and middle mm -hmm. stages. Let's go back and sort of start this conversation over and assess our threats and uh, the possible solutions. Uh, have a conversation, the whole board together, not just one member, mm -hmm. with the law enforcement people in our communities and, and uh, work through it in a proper way. Okay. And just to kind of help a student understanding, when the board normally takes on a new issue like this, and you've talked about getting input from Brian Smith and the IEA, Superintendent Woodward, how does that process normally look where you are collecting data and having a board discussion? Well, in most cases it would be, um, there would, we would ask the superintendent and uh, the staff to, to bring us input, uh, recommendations. It's, it's pretty unusual that a board man, one board member or several board members would go out and do their own independent research. Mm -hmm. That's kind of not the normal way it works. I mean, once the information is before us, then we, you know, we're certainly free to do that, but that wouldn't and uh, would it be the standard we'd ask for, for staff input and then okay. we would decide who else would you like to talk to as a board and could we have other people in that could be working on? I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at some point in the future the board could invite law enforcement or other experts from the field in so that everyone can hear a presentation. Everyone can hear the same thing at the same time and, and we hear it differently or we have different questions and different questions will elicit different responses and that 
that's really why collaboration is so much better than you know right. one person going off and doing doing their own thing. I mean, the whole best practices for mm -hmm. boards, why you have a board, and five elected people, is so that they work together and come up, usually you wind up with better uh, solutions than if just kind of one person is doing right. it. And where does public comment generally fit into that process? Uh, well, public comment is important. Um, Depending on the nature, if it's something that really affects the whole district and is there's obviously a lot of public interest out there. So you're saying that you value public comment and then as far as the timeline? Um, well, I don't know that there's any straight timeline. I mean, uh, it depends on the, sort of the, the range of the issues. We have to discuss how long after public comment it will take to reach, reach conclusions. This one might take longer than most. Mm -hmm. um, but public comment is... is is very important. That's why we've had one public meeting, and if there's a sense that we have a whole different take on this, and we mm -hmm. want to take that back to see what the public input is, we may do that. But we're not, you know, not anywhere near making that decision yet. Very good. Anything you'd like to add? No. Thanks for doing right. this. I yeah, think absolutely. It's very ambitious of you, and I appreciate you doing it. Obviously, this is important to students and right. the whole community. So thanks. Yeah. No, I appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.